When it comes to everyday carry items, I wouldn't be without the notepad and pen art right up there, but not any old notepad and pen. This notepad and pen. Hi, my name is Jonathan and welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, I'm going to run through why a notepad and pen is so important in my view for everyday carry. And then I'm gonna tell you what notepad and pen I am using out of all the ones that are available in the market. And it might not be what you expect. When you look at writing versus typing, writing uses a different part of the brain. It is more of a creative process. And for me, at least, I find ideas flow much more easily when I have a pen in my hand. Humans, let's face it, have been writing and drawing for thousands of years. So in evolutionary terms, it is much more embedded, which is why it perhaps feels so natural. Writing and sketching slows you down, and that's a good thing because it makes you think. And it's widely researched that the act of writing something down improves not only comprehension, but memory recall. For me, I like to sketch and highlight and connect things with lines and arrows and doodles, and I find that inspiration comes from that. Don't get me wrong, I type a lot more than I write. Let's face it, it's quicker, editable and shareable. But when it comes to capturing thoughts and developing ideas, nothing for me beats a notebook. I have lots of meetings with people and I often want to take notes, but just imagine if you are sat there with a laptop typing away whilst they're talking to you, or even worse, a mobile device, that is just not a good way to connect with people. But strangely, if you are sat there with a notebook and writing away whilst you talk, that seems much more acceptable and natural. And maybe it's because you can maintain eye contact a lot better when you're jotting notes into a notebook than when you're typing, which requires more concentration on the keyboard itself. The other thing to know is that a notebook is distraction free. So you can distance yourself from your electronic devices and start letting the ideas flow. When I was preparing for this video and pretty much every video, I make notes in my notebook about the concepts and ideas I want to get across. Then I transfer those notes to my laptop and whilst I'm typing it up, I'm getting bombarded with notifications, email alerts, Slack messages, text messages, WhatsApp messages. You get the idea, basically constant interruption. And in this case, I'm fine because I'm just copying notes from my notebook into my laptop. But if I was trying to be creative and typing at the same time, then the constant distraction would just ruin the whole process. And it's very difficult for me for ideas to flow when I'm constantly being bombarded by various distractions. There's something really nice about not relying on technology sometimes, not having to look at a screen, not needing a data connection or wondering whether you have enough power left to finish what you're doing. And the great thing about a notepad is it frees you from all of that. With a notebook by your side, you can have a thought or an idea and get it down in a couple of seconds. And you can take it where technology fears to tread from a frozen mountaintop to a desert in the baking heat. There are no issues with screen brightness or contrast or battery life. And you don't have any of the issues associated with extreme temperatures. So if you're in the Arctic and say your pen stops working, you can just grab a pencil. And the other great thing about a notepad is you can drop it and it won't break. Okay, so you might be wondering what is my notepad and pen of choice out of all those in the market available today? Well, I am a product guy and I'm always on a mission to find the best tool for the job and it's not always the newest thing. And in the case of this notebook, believe it or not, this came to market for the first time 116 years ago. This notebook is the Smythson Panama, first introduced to the market by Frank Smythson in 1908 and hasn't changed since. Now I'm going to come to the price shortly because this thing is stupidly expensive for a pocket notebook, but please bear with me because this thing is special. It's worth pointing out that I've been using Panama notebooks for a few years now because I've never found anything that can beat it for my purposes. This is my current one dug out my oldest one. This was my first one. 
and as you can see they are pocket size and they will fit in an inside jacket pocket if that's what you want for me i carry it in whatever bag i am carrying so i've always got it with me and that's either a backpack usually or a sling bag the actual dimensions are nine centimeters by 14 by one centimeter thick which is three and a half inches by 5.5 inches by three quarters of an inch thick and in terms of weight it weighs 100 grams which is three and a half ounces so I used to use a five notebooks like these I have a whole library of moleskin notebooks then I switched to these uh, thinner notebooks to make it a little bit easier to carry but when they are this big I find I don't have them with me at all times whereas the Panama notebook was actually designed for travel so this I found is a much better size because I've always got it with me in terms of construction, the Panama is made from the finest cross grain leather, but the leather is so thin you can do this with it. You can literally roll it up and stick it in your back pocket and it always seems to go back to its shape with no kind of bending or creases in it. It's just really durable. This one I've had for years. This still does that and it still looks good. It's available in nine colors, plus some weird seasonal special edition options. And you can also buy some with quotes on like this or have them customized. And I don't say this about many things, but it feels really special. Inside it gets even more interesting. The paper here is patented. It's milled in Great Britain and has been for over 100 years and it is so thin at only 50 grams per square meter which is about half the weight of normal paper. The pages are like blue and they're lined and that's it. Don't expect any other options and you'll know it's genuine because every page is watermarked. Amazingly in this notebook there are 128 pages which means 256 sides to write on which is twice as many as you might expect in a notebook this thick. This paper was originally designed to take ink from a fountain pen and for it to dry quickly and not smudge or bleed or show through and in today's world it's just incredibly nice to write on. My preference is to use a rollerball gel pen because it writes so smoothly on this paper but to be honest anything seems to write better on these pages. The other great thing about this notepad is that it lays flat and that makes it so much easier to write on. You can write across two pages at once if that's how you want to do it. There are not many notepads that you can lay flat and even less that you can fold back on themselves like that and use with one hand journalist style without damaging the spine. But with this notebook you can. This is a premium or luxury item of that there is no doubt. The gilt edged pages and the royal warrant give that away along with the stitched binding and the amazing quality and materials and of course the price. And the price of this little notebook in the UK is £49 including tax and that equates to more like $70 by the time it's found its way over to the US. Crazy I know it is an indulgence but it does feel special every time I use it and with 256 pages to write on it lasts about a year which is 50 weeks and that means it's costing me about a pound a week and when I think about it I use it every day I have it with me all the time my ideas and inspiration can be found in here and it feels really special every time I use it. So with all that considered, a pound a week doesn't really sound too bad. And you can tell I really like it because I already have my next one ready to go. This is how they come boxed. They are nicely presented. This one is actually very dark blue. You can hardly tell the difference if I'm being honest. And that's what a brand new one looks like compared to one that's been used for the best part of a year. They have a flagship store in London on Bond Street where they've been since 1887. It's also worth checking them out in the sale when the weird special edition colours that nobody really wants can be heavily discounted. 
I was tempted with a nasty silver one earlier in the year at 40% off, but in the end, I thought I actually really do value these and paid full price for this dark blue one. But the real message here is about carrying any notebook. They can be as cheap as you like. Why not carry one with you as part of your everyday carry? And if you don't already, give it a go. You might surprise yourself. So that's the notebook. Let's have a look at the pen. The pen of choice for me is this one. It's from Big Idea Designs and they refer to it as the most refill friendly bolt action pen ever. And that gives away two of its key features. One is the bolt action, which is great for fiddle factor and annoying people around you. And the other one is the fact that this will take over a hundred different refills in the market today. Just have a look at this list for refills that are known to fit this pen. And there are others that have not yet been tested. So if you have a favorite refill, but are not crazy about the pen, then this is a great option. This is machine out of titanium. I think it looks great. I think it also looks heavy, but it actually only weighs 27 grams, which is less than an ounce. The length actually varies depending on what refill you are using, but goes up to a maximum of around 130 mil, which is 5.1 inches. The diameter of the body of the pen is 9.7 millimeters, which is 0.38 inches. And the grip is slightly wider at 11.3 mil or 0.44 inches. The quality is fab, like everything from Big Idea Design. It has a deep carry pocket clip, which is really tough and substantial and actually fits on this notebook really well. Let me just show you, it goes on there and there's no way that thing is coming off there. And the same would be true if it was in a pocket and the pocket clip can be reversed, which means it can be kind of swapped over 180 degrees. And I think that's for left-handers. It comes with a Schmidt pressurized refill, which I don't like. So I've swapped it for a Pentel Energel 0.7, which works really well. There are lots of color options with this pen. This is machined out of titanium. This is the raw finish. You can also get a stone washed finish and a DLC black finish. And you can also get it in solid brass and solid copper. And if you're super loaded, zirconium. And in the box, you also get a couple of spare parts in the form of some O-rings and a spring. And I originally backed this on Kickstarter last year, that's 2021. And this currently retails for $100. If you want to know more about this pen, I'll put a link in the description underneath the video. Just to make it clear though, this video is not sponsored and nobody has supplied anything free here. I'm just showing you what I'm using every day and why I love it. So let's face it, the best pen to use is the one that has the best refill for you. And therefore this could be the best pen for most people. So if you've enjoyed this video, you might want to check out one of my other EDC essentials, my wallet, and I'll provide a link here. Thank you as always for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.